Welcome to Marincy First. We're so glad you're here. Thanks for watching this week's message. If you would like more information about Marincy First, such as service times or ministry opportunities, feel free to check out facebook.com backslash Marincy AG or Marincy First at youtube.com. And two great ways to stay connected throughout the week is by hitting the subscribe button on our YouTube page. That way you'll be notified when something new is posted and by hitting like on our Facebook page. Thanks again for joining us today. Welcome home.
and let them be signs to indicate seasons and days and years. Uh, we're going to read a little bit more later, but we're going to stop right there for the moment. So Dolores, go ahead and read for us. Father, we ask your blessing upon your word. Just meet us right where we are. Lord, just send down your sweet Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. You must be one of those city boys, ain't you? That's a line that I'll never forget that helped me decipher not only the will of God, but helps me decipher pastoring and, and seasons of God. It was one of those moments where the toilet, instead of going this way, begins to go that way. You know one of those moments. You know, when you go into the bathroom and <clears throat> to do bathroom things, you know, you go into the bathroom to do bathroom things. And after you're done doing bathroom things, you flush the you know, push the handle, and instead of things going down like they should go down, they act like they're mad at you for some reason that they're coming to get you. Not fun. Not fun at all. So, you know, the, the plumber comes out, and, and the, the plumber runs a snake up, up the pipe, and, and the plumber's dragging out roots, and he's dragging out roots, and and mainly just to make conversation, you know, Dummy Me makes a comment to the plumber as he's pulling out roots out of the pipe. And, and like I said, mainly just to make conversation, I say, you know, I'm, I'm shocked that so many roots are in there when it's so cold outside. And, and I'll never forget, the plumber looks back at me, you know, we were in Alabama at the time, and he kind of had that southern draw with, you know, dip in his lip, you know how it goes. And, and he looks kind of at me kind of confused, like, you dummy. And he says, you, <laughs> can't do it, but he's, you know, you must be one of those city boys, ain't you? <laughs> like, well, what gave you the clue? He goes, roots don't grow in the, sp in the spring, they grow in the winter, dummy, you know, kind of thing, you know. You know, don't you know, you know, roots don't grow in the spring, they grow in the winter. Huh, I didn't know that. Roots don't grow in the spring, they grow in the winter. There's a season for everything, and everything has a season. There's a season for everything, and everything has a season. God has a season. Our lives have a season. Everything has a season. There's a season for everything. I wasn't aware of that. And this week we're, we're looking at and we're honoring our staff. So I want to look at some universal truths that play out not only in ministry but in life. Because God works on a cycle. There's a life cycle. There's a rhythm to how God moves. There's a rhythm to how God blesses not only our lives, but how God works. And there's seasons to life. And if you don't understand those seasons, and you don't understand how that works, a lot of times you're fighting against what God is doing. And a lot of times that's why we're so tired. And instead of fighting against God, God wants to partner with us so that we're working with God. You see, God is a God of order, and he moves and he functions in the cycles of seasons. The church functions and goes through seasons. Our life goes through seasons. One of the greatest challenges of ministry and one of the greatest challenges of life is to understand what season you're in. To understand and to distinguish what season that God has you in and what season of life you're in so that you're not fighting against God 
or you're not trying to stay in a season he doesn't want you in, because if you stay in a season too long, you'll destroy yourself. Distinguishing what season you're in. Distinguishing where God has you. Distinguishing the rhythm of God. See, you can either work with God or you can work against God. You have to understand that rhythm. It's kind of the principle of the yoke. You know, Jesus tells us that our his you know, yoke is easy and his burden is light, and yet 99% of us as believers are running our race exhausted. Exhausted. And you know one of the number one reasons for that? Anybody that knows anything about the way that they used to have yokes back years ago, and I loved when I learned this because it opened everything up for me. A yoke, when they put a yoke on two horses or two mules or two yaks or whatever, a lot of people don't know this, but there's a little knob in the middle of the yoke. And the reason that there's a little knob in the middle of the yoke is because there's not two horses that are the same or two mules that are the same. One is always stronger than the other. So when they would yoke two horses together, or two mules together, they would turn this knob and what it would do is it would automatically shift the weight of the yoke where the strongest yak or the strongest mule or the strongest horse would automatically get the most weight. So that when they took off, they would pull in a straight line. Because if they didn't turn the knob, they would go in a circle. But they would turn this knob so that the weight would shift so that the strongest horse would carry the most weight, so that then they would pull in a straight line. It would work it together. So Jesus says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. What he's saying is, is in life, I will take all of the weight upon myself, and we will pull this together. Your, light, your weight will be so easy, because I will be carrying it all, or most of it. Because the knob will be switched. The problem comes in is when we're not understanding the seasons of life or we're not understanding the ways God are, is going or the rhythms of this is because God is going straight while we're pulling left. God is going straight while we're pulling right. Or we're looking straight ahead and we see a problem, we think, well, Jesus isn't worried about it because he says all authority and all power is all given to me. So he's just marching on because he's like, I got this. And we're like digging our feet in the sand because we see a problem coming. And Jesus is going, so we're dragging. Of course we're tired. Instead of marching in unity... And letting Jesus carry the load and the weight of life, we're sticking our feet into the ground because we anticipate problems. Or we're looking ahead, or we're going right, we're going left, or we're trying to stay in a season that we like instead of going where Jesus is trying to take us. And he's dragging us. We're digging our heels in. That is how come we're missing out on one of the greatest promises of Scripture. Jesus is like, hey, wait a minute. I will take your yoke. I will take your burden. I will take your everything upon myself. And you know what? Your journey will be light if you let me carry it. And yet we're all the time, you know, it says in the New Testament, hey, wait a minute, why are you always kicking against the goads? <clears throat> what are some of it is translated, why are you kicking against the pricks? What does that mean? Why are you always kicking against what God is doing? Basically, why are you sticking your heels in the stand and making him drag you? Why are you always trying to go opposite of the way he's trying to take you? Because if you ever get in sync with him, basically he'll carry your own burden. It'll be an easy travel. Because the heavy horse always carries the weight. Or most of it. 
that's the way it's designed. That's the way it works. That's the principle of the oath. You see, seasons is natural and obvious, but not so much in life. But see, we need every season to be healthy or you'll destroy yourself. So I'm going to look at this. We're going to look at this. What are the seasons of life? What does it mean? What do we do with it? So we're going to look at the rhythms. We're going to look at how God plays out in rhythms. We're going to do it in a two-week part. This week we're just going to kind of drag on the seasons. And next week we're going to kind of look at how we put them into practice and how we use them to make decisions. How do we do them to decipher God's will for our lives? Anybody have trouble finding God's will? Man, there's a bunch of liars out there. <laughs> Either you lie a lot or you sleep a lot. I don't know which one yet. I haven't got started very long, so I don't think you can be that much asleep yet. But we have problems deciphering the will of God, and a lot of that comes back to the fact that we don't really understand the cycle or the season that God has us in. And some of it also goes back to the fact that we went through a season, we really liked that season, so we want to stay there, we want to camp out there, and then God moves on, and we don't realize why we don't feel the same. We don't realize why we don't have the same kind of emotion or the feelings, and we feel, oh, oh what's going on here? Well, God has moved from that season, and we're fighting to stay there. The anointing, the, the season, the atmosphere has shifted from where we're trying to be. <clears throat> you will never sense the move of God where it was in the season that you're trying to be at if you're not with him. It's not about what season you want to be in. It's about being where God wants you. I want to look at some of these. Guys, you're at the last point. We need to go all the way back around. We're way off. All right, we're going to talk at spring here. Number one, spring. 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 This is the first season. What happens in spring? In spring, the earth moves closer to the sun. That's an awesome thing. So the atmosphere begins to shift. New life appears. Bugs appear. Everything begins to come. The ground begins to be softened. New life begins to come out. Everything begins to appear. Everything begins to have new life again. Everything begins to warm up. And oh, life is good. Your devotions just jump right off the page. Your relationship with God is sky high. You know, you're feeling pumping in your veins. Everything is awesome. You know that song, everything is awesome. <laughs> it is great. Spring is awesome. Everything is working. Everything you want is happening right in front of you. God's answering your prayer request. Everything is going great. <laughs> Spring is spring. It's great. Everything is coming to life. You can't wait to get to church. You can't wait. You can't wait. You can't wait. You can't wait. It is all right there. Everything begins to bud before your eyes. This is a season of new life where everything's going your way. Your relationship's at an all-time high. Your faith is strong. This is a time in church where you're growing leaps and bounds. We call it revival. That's a cool word, isn't it? Revival. What's revival mean? It means something that is dormant comes to life again. Something that is dormant comes to life again. You see, you have this great move of God. People are getting saved. Everyone's jumping. Worship is awesome. Everybody is excited. Worship's at a whole new level. Everything's intense. 
you know, is, the band doesn't even have to do anything. They just step on stage and it's like everybody's like, yes! <laughs> they ain't have to hit a note. It doesn't matter if they sing Amazing Grace or just, whoa, we're just ready. It's like the atmosphere is shifted. It has nothing to do with us. It's not an us thing because we're doing everything we've always done. It's nothing to do with you. It's a timing of God. The atmosphere is just shifted. Everything. You're doing everything the same. It's a timing thing. The worship is awesome. Your prayer life is awesome. The church is moving. People are coming crazy. Everything is just coming together. In your life, everything is coming together. Everything is functioning. You feel it in the atmosphere. It's, it's just awesome. The atmosphere is shifted. It's the wisdom and timing of God. You know, people say... You know, I, I want to live in revival. But here's the question. How are you going to be revived more than once? How are we going to be revived more than once? You know, so once you're revived, you're revived. It's not about living in revival. You know, think about Lazarus. He, here's Lazarus. He comes waddling out of the tomb, and, and he comes waddling out, wrapped in head to toe, and he's like, man, dude, that was awesome. I want to go back in and do it again. It's not about living in revival. It's about living in where in the season that God has you. God's moving. God's moving. But this is a springtime. Everybody's smiling and energetic and happy. And, and, and church is booming. And your life is booming. And everything is just going great. It's spring. The band fills it. You fill it. Your Sunday school class fills it. Everybody feels it. The atmosphere is shifted. You feel it at work. You feel it in your home. You feel it everywhere. In your personal life, you know, you feel it. Spring's enjoyable. Buds are popping up everywhere. Nothing's forced. Everyone's smiling. You know, in your personal life, there are just times when, you know, it's easy to shout. It's easy to praise. It's easy to desire to come to church. It's easy to say, oh, yes, God is good. And it's, it's just easy. Revival's happening inside. It's just easy. You've got your song. You've got it going. And it's just easy. It's a joy. There's an expectation to it. You know what I'm talking about? You've been there. You feel it. It's spring. And then spring leads us into another season, and it's called harvest. Leads us into the next season. It's called harvest. Harvest is a unique season. And the reason that harvest is so unique is at the end of spring comes a very short season harvest. And the reason that harvest is so unique is because it's so short. So short. It's time sensitive. There's a cycle to it. It's a unique season. And it's a season that you have to pay attention to. Think about it. When there's fruit on the tree and they've been there too long, what happens? They rot. When fruit is coming from the ground and it's been there too long, what happens? It rots. In harvest, you gotta harvest when it's time to harvest. Look, cotton farmers and cotton and wheat farmers, when they get their combines ready, when it's time to harvest, and they're getting ready to harvest. They get all their combines ready. And they get a first line. And then they get a second line. They get a backup. Why? Because when the front line breaks down, they don't repair it. They just bring in the second line. Because they know that while they're repairing the first line, what is on the tree, what is on the field, will ruin. It's time sensitive. You have to harvest when it's harvest time. Jesus makes a little 
odd statement. He says, the fields are white to harvest. Have you ever wondered what that means? Most people don't know what that means. You know what white to harvest means? White to harvest means this. It means that right as you're getting ready to go harvest the field, it begins to rain. And you're not able to get out to the field and harvest it because it's raining. So you look out, and it, as you see a white come on the crops, means that you're about, if you don't get it soon, you're about ready to lose it. You have, it's now or never. So what Jesus was telling them was, is you're about ready to lose this generation. They're ripe for harvest. They're almost too ripe. It's now or never. But harvest carries this weight about it. There's a cycle to it. You can miss it. It's a, it's a time-intensive moment. And see, we have to grasp this when it comes to our personal lives. There are times when God moves us into an opportunity for our family, for our finances, for the kingdom, for the ministry. There are times out of spring that we move into harvest that this is the time not to just know the Spirit, but to be led by the Spirit. You time to take a leap of faith, time to put faith into action. It's time to move. This is the time where, okay, God, we planted everything that God has told us to plant. We had a good spring. Now it's time to do the harvest. This is time to put faith into action and to move, but it's time sensitive. This is the time in the church where souls are getting saved. Everything is happening. This is where people are getting saved every week. Week after week after week after week, people are getting saved. It's harvest time. This is revival. It's time sensitive. It happens. Moments. Time after time. Harvest time. You see, it's not time to just enjoy the presence of God, but it's time to be led by it, to act, to move. The church begins to see souls saved, and it begins to see things happen, and that's where you see divine healings, and, and it's fun, and, and all the other stuff. But here's the deal. The Lord is not going to leave us there. And you say, why wouldn't God leave you there? People are getting saved, and, and things are happening, and people are being healed, and why, 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 why wouldn't he leave you there? And here's the deal. Why, this is why God won't leave us there. This is why God won't leave you personally there. This is why God won't leave us there as a church, because if he leaves you there, you will outgrow your root system. You outgrow your root system. The season has to end. If it grows too much up top, you'll be top heavy and any storm will blow you over. Here's the point. There are so many of us that don't have the root system to contain or to sustain the miracle or the prayers we're praying. We don't have the root system to sustain the prayers that we're praying. And if God was to give us what we're praying for, it would kill us because we would be too top heavy. There's so many times, there's a time to harvest, but we can't stay there forever. We have to move from there. We can't stay there. That's why there's a cycle of life. There's a time that God has to keep moving us. As a church, God has to keep moving us. You know, people say all the time, you know, wait a minute. I don't want to leave this season. This is a good season. Well, yes, it is a good season. But if God leaves you there, you'll be top heavy and your life will be destroyed. There has to be other seasons in your life. A church has to go through other seasons. You personally have to go through other seasons. Because your root system and all the other parts of your life have to be strong enough and you have to have the character enough to sustain your harvest. We have to move from there. 
I'll never forget as the Lord was teaching me about this. I had the opportunity, we went to a district training. One of the last times I got to hear, they had a clip from one of my greatest heroes, Steve Hill. I don't know if any of you know who that is. Some do, some don't. But Steve Hill was the evangelist that came on Father's Day to Brownsville Revival. He was the one that started Brownsville Revival with John Kilpatrick. And he was one of the one of my greatest heroes. And I just love him <coughs> to death. He is one of the greatest men of God I've ever known. And he's done so many great works for God. But he's the guy that just moved in the revival. And I'll never forget... God was kind of teaching me about seasons, and we, we went to this district training, and they were kind of teaching about this. And, and he said this clip, and he says, God's been teaching me about seasons. And he said, I wish I would have known it when I was at Brownsville Revival because I feel responsible for her. He says, I, I think I wasn't the reason that Brownsville ended because I tried to keep her in spring when God was moving her to fall. I wish I would have known about the seasons of God because I fought against what God wanted to do. Because why wouldn't God want to keep the revival going? But anything top heavy will blow over. Harvest is a time sensitive season. But after harvest, we come to another season that we don't like as much. It's fall, but it's, in my opinion, it's probably more important than spring. And winter that comes after it is more important than all of them. But fall, what happens in fall, the atmosphere shifts again. And listen to me, ministers. Fall and winter are our toughest time if we don't realize it because we fight against God through it. <clears throat> This is a season that will make and break your ministry. The earth moves farther from the sun during this season. You don't feel the closeness that you once felt. You have to lead out of a place in yourself that's not as gushy and filled. You don't have the goosebumps that you feel. You have to lead in a different area. You don't feel the closeness to God that you had in the spring. You feel dormant. You feel dry. Knowing the areas and the seasons of life will save you a lot of heartache. You see, we've all been on that level. We've all been here. Anybody out there been there at fall? Yeah. You see, what happens to the trees at fall? The leaves fall off. Everything pretty about you falls off. This becomes a hard time for us. You know why? Because our leaves fall off, which leaves us standing before God bare. As a church, it leaves us standing before God bare. It exposes what doesn't bear fruit. As an individual, it exposes what doesn't bear fruit. It's the pruning season. We have to have fall. Fall is a valuable time. God gave us a good spring, but now he's pruning us. Now it's the pruning time. God begins to prune what is dead out of us. What's not beautiful, what's not bearing fruit, he begins to cut away. And he begins to prune that what's not producing, not only in our personal lives, but in our church as ministry leaders. And he also begins to prune even what is producing. It's not just what is dead, but it is what's producing as well. Because he takes a limb that's producing good fruit and he trims it back. Why? Because he wants it to branch out and produce not just fruit, but more limbs to produce more fruit. <clears throat> There's always a pruning season. If you don't go through fall, you won't produce more fruit. 
And God is always taking you through the pruning season. The atmosphere shifts again. It's not as fun as spring. God begins to prune what needs to change about our lives out of us. Look, no one's jumping around in worship anymore. In spring, we're in the harvest business. Now in fall, we're in the praying business. You see, in spring, we're preaching faith messages. In harvest, it's all about the altar call. But during the fall, it's sermons shift, and it's about what, how we live for God. It's totally different. You see, during the spring, we're just getting saved, and we're just coming to Christ. But during the fall, God says, okay, wait a minute. You've now been saved for six months, two years, one year. Okay, you've, you've been doing great. It's all about coming to me. But now you've been saved for two years. Now it's time to get married. Now it's time to get your life right. Now it's time to make the decision. Now it's time, okay, now it's time to get things ready. You, you, you've been fine. We've harvested. We've planted. Spring is good. We've had revival. Everybody came into the barn. But now that time over. Now we're all bare before him. The leaves are falling off. We're not jumping around in worship anymore. The atmosphere has shifted. Now it's time to prune out what shouldn't be there. Now it's character time. Now it's time to get you ready. Now it's time to line up with what God says. Now it's time to start changing a little bit. The messages change. During spring, it's all about faith. During harvest, it's all about the altar call. But now during spring, it's all of, I mean, during fall, it's all about, this is what God says. This is, this is how we line up. That, you know, this is what communion is. This is what, and we start shifting As everybody is bare, and that's the way it works in our personal life, God takes us into this fall season. He begins to expose us. You know, one of the hardest things in ministry is, is to decipher the seasons of God. You know, sometimes we know the ways of God, but we don't always understand the seasons of God. But we have to be very careful we're not fighting against what God wants to do, and we're not fighting against what God is doing. You see, I've seen good sermons fall flat because it was in the wrong season. Think about it. You know, sometimes a fall sermon during the spring will come out legalistic or on and on and on. God begins to deal with us and our attitudes and begins to purge us and cleanse us. And, and there's the time in our lives. We have to go through that time. And you have to understand in our personal lives, look, there's that fall and time that comes after the spring and after the harvest. God begins to save us and he begins to move in us and he begins to clean us up after that. Why? Because if we don't get the character, what he's given us won't last. He has to begin to prune out of us. And it's an ongoing process. We have to complete the seasons over and over and over again. And listen, we're, we're constantly running through the seasons, but we have to decipher them in our own lives. We're always wanting spring. We're always wanting to harvest. We're always wanting God's blessing. We're always saying, okay, God, give this to me. Answer my prayers. But sometimes he has us in fall because he's trying to reveal to us, you need to tweak this in your character. It's like it used to be when we'd come and pray, it's like the goosebumps would hit us and we'd feel this presence and we'd feel the anointing. Now when we come and pray, it's like God is saying, hey, wait a minute, you need to stop talking about people. And you're like, well, I've always been talking about people. And, and he's like, I know that. And it wasn't right back then, but I was giving you a good spring so that you were doing and coming to me and knowing me. But now it's time to change that. Because I'm getting ready to do something else in your life. And for you to go to the next level, you got to deal with this. Amen. The only way you can go to the next level is for me to take you through a fall. I know 
we, we, we stand there. We don't like it because now all the leaves are off of us and we feel exposed. We feel numb. We feel, we feel dry. We're like, God, I still love you as much as I've always loved you. Why don't I feel you anymore? And God screams back, I still love you and I'm still just as close. And you're like, well, great way to show it, God. And he's like, you don't understand. Me pruning you is the greatest act of love I can give you. Because if I don't prune you, I can't take you back into spring. So what happens is he, we go through this fall season where God begins to mold us and shape us and purge us. But then we move into the next season. It's winter. You see, during spring, you know, like I said, we're preaching faith. And during harvest, everything is an altar call. And, and people are getting saved. And during fall, we begin to line up ourselves or line ourselves up with the Bible, living for God. But during winter, you see, you, you shift again. Now we're preaching more theology. You go deeper. This is the root system. Now it's about the roots. You see, winter is the why to the what. Roots don't grow in spring, they grow in winter. God begins to develop our root system. People begin hungry and hungry and hungry for real meaning, for real answers, for real questions. You see, the root has to be affected before there can be another season. I hear church people say all the time about particular churches and other churches, and they say, oh, this church is dead, and that church is dead. But you see, most of the time, it's just it just shows our immaturity because we don't understand the seasons of God. You see, there's a difference between dead and dormant. Fall and winter are normal seasons and cycles of God. Fall and winter are equally important, if not more so, than spring just because something or a church is in winter or spring doesn't mean that they're dead. It means that God has given them deep roots so that they can have a spring. But the truth is, is a lot of churches and individuals never receive a spring because they fight and kick and scream and never complete a fall and a winter and they never can support the next spring season. That's the truth. We can never support the next spring season because we kick and scream during fall, so we never get the character and we never get the root system. If God gave us a harvest sometimes, we'd be so top-heavy. Have you seen somebody in ministry that was doing really good and was really being anointed at this level, but then something happened that they went to this level and they had a major fall? What happened? <coughs> They technically didn't have a root system for that. Sometimes we're, God doesn't elevate us. Sometimes the world does. Sometimes, you know, the enemy will even offer us stuff. That's why knowing the season that we're in is so very important. God's not the only one offering you things. I've seen good ministers that are in good churches that God was really moving, and then another church will offer them a position. It really wasn't God's doing and that next position destroys their ministry because they end up having an immoral fall. What happened was they had the root system at where they were, but they were not rooted for the next place. They became top heavy. They didn't realize the season of their life. They didn't understand where they were. If God gave them the harvest, you know, some of us are praying for a miracle and a breakthrough, but God can't give it to us because we keep diving out of fall, diving out of winter. We have to understand the seasons of life that we're in. You see, winter is that time in our lives that God just pruned us 
And now he's growing us in knowledge and faith, and he's growing our root system. You don't feel the warm. You don't feel the fuzzies. Look, this is a hard time. We don't have all the good things happening that we once had. We don't have the jumping. You know, the, the band has to struggle a little bit. They don't feel the, the, the you know, the, the movement isn't there. The atmosphere isn't in the revival mode. You have to push through the... the, the, the the devotions are jumping off the page at you. You have to push yourself. This is a hard time. You're in winter. You're a little dormant. God is taking you in a different direction. This isn't death. This is growing your roots. Your roots don't grow in the spring. You grow upward. You don't grow downward. But the problem is, is you'll never grow upward, outgrow your root system. And that's why so many people plateau spiritually. That's why so many churches plateau. That's why ministries plateau. That's why Sunday school classes plateau. Because their root system never grows big enough to hold a big upward movement. We have to be careful that we don't want the fruit before we get the root. You know, God feels miles away at this point. We feel miles away from God. Winter is not. It's a dry season. Anybody ever felt dry? You ever had a winter? This is a horrible time. I'm not saying it's fun. But it's a season that you and I and everyone in life goes through. It's a biblical time. It's a biblical season. And you can fight against it, or you can fight and walk with it. It is a time of life. And no matter what you do, you see, here's the problem with winter. I don't care how many revivals you go to. I don't care how many people pray for you. I don't care how many Hail Marys you send up or whatever you want to do or how many times you bend over backwards or do circles or whatever. You're not going to get out of it that way because this is when the atmosphere shifts. You can't shift it back. This is a God timing. This is a God season. And this is a God action. You have no control over it. It's not about something you've done or not something you will do to get out of it. The atmosphere will shift when the God time is over. And the way that that happens is when we've got what we need, when the roots hit the right place or when God is done in that time. What you don't want to happen is you fight so hard to get out of it that God relents and lets you out of it too early. Because then either you will get a spring that you don't deserve and it will topple you or you won't get your spring at all. You don't want to get out too early. This is a season of life. The more you fight and kick and scream is the longer you'll last. Staff, listen to me. Ministry is tough, and the grass is always greener on the other side and somewhere else. We sometimes blame the place where we're ministering for the own personal season that we find ourselves <clears throat> in. In ministry, sometimes we're always looking ahead to what God has for us in future to bigger and better things. But listen... You know, sometimes we're like people in Jesus' own hometown, and we get this mindset, and we're like, you know, can God and can good things really come out of the ministry that we're in now? But here's the deal. Sometimes we're so busy trying to get the Tarshish that we never see the God, good God's doing in Nineveh where we are. We have to recognize the seasons that we are in and what God is doing and how God is leading and directing. We cannot push on the place of where we're ministering the personal seasons that we're living in. 
If you live your in your ministry dependent upon your personal seasons, you'll be jumping from one to the other, from place to place, and you'll constantly be living in a state of panic. And if you live with your ministry in a state of only needing revival, you will never, ever be happy or content because revival season only lasts a limited window every now and again. Then you have to come in and plant and you have to prune your people, plant your roots, and then come again. If you never help your people disciple, then they'll never grow. And then you'll never have Sunday school teachers and people that are growing enough to handle the next harvest. And then if you never put roots on your people, how are they going to sustain? So how are you ever going to be ready for the next revival that you're fighting for? Everybody's like, I need revival. No, you don't. You need God to come in and help you develop some disciples and help you develop. Who's going to get out there witnessing to people and saving some souls? You don't need more jumping. That will come in due season. You get some pruning going on. And then after some pruning happens, then God says, okay, I've pruned you. Now I'm going to plant you deep. And then after he gets you deep enough, then he's like, okay, these people have been pruned. They've been now put deep. Now it's time to open up the heavens. Now he sends us in a great big harvest. Now we fill up the buckets and we harvest as hard as we can harvest. And then what happens if we get the buckets full? Then he's like, okay, the buckets are pretty as full as they can get. Then we take all the people that we just pruned and all the roots that we done, then we put them in practice. We okay, okay. Then we take these people, and then what we do, we start discipling them. We start pruning them. We start grinding their roots. And then we, that's how you grow a church. And then it starts all back over again. Then they start discipling. Then they start. You, you see it? Amen. That's the way it works. Amen. I mean, Lord, if you just stay at this point, if you, I mean... Everybody's always talking about growth, growth, growth. Look, if, if we were to grow tomorrow to 10,000 people, where A, where would we put them? B, who, who would be their Sunday school teachers? Where would we disciple? That would be nonsense. We would, we, we, wouldn't, we would be for show. We wouldn't be for Christ. That's nonsense. We couldn't handle that. A true pastor's heart would be for discipling them and making them followers and believers of Jesus. A church grows at the rate of which they can handle them. So that every person that comes in doesn't get lost within the weeds so that they go back out. Because they have to go through the seasons of life so that they turn into productive believers. So if we don't let this season prune us and our roots go deep, we won't be ready for when God says, okay, get your buckets ready. That's why all of this is important, and that's why it's important in your personal life. And that's why God is telling us to open up our eyes because, wait a minute, look, you need to hear this. Because some of us are praying for some pretty big things, and we're all the time, well, you know, we're trying to kick and scream and get out of the, oh, COVID this and COVID that. Wait a minute. Step back and say, wait a minute, Lord. Where am I at in this season of life? What are you doing here? Because we've sometimes been trying to get an out and a breakthrough and all this other stuff for years. And it hasn't happened yet. Why are we doing the same thing we've always been doing, trying to get out of something we've always been getting out of, and it's not working yet? And I don't care who prays for you or what TV show you read or what book you open. It doesn't matter. Some of it goes back to you're hitched to the horse, but you're going left, and he's going a different direction. So you're wore out tired. You know one of the biggest things, and listen to me, staff, that I learned in ministry a, a long time ago. I used to be so tired. But you know what burnout is? When you're fighting against the yoke. When you're constantly putting your feet in, going a different direction, or trying to stay in a season that God doesn't want you, you're burned out. How can you fight against God and not get tired? I hear it all the time. Oh, I'm burned out. Well, yeah, you're burned out because God's going left and you're going right. Or you're trying to get somewhere that he doesn't want to go. 
If you hitch up beside him and just walk beside him, how can you be burned out when he's carrying the load? But we all get burned out because we all have this driven part of ourselves that always wants to do it our way. We always think we know the next curve, the next corner, and we all have these plans. But you got to take a step back and start deciphering the season of what you're in. Or you will live burned out for your entire ministry career. And that goes for all of us. We all live that way. It doesn't matter if you're a minister or not. You've been burned out? We're all burned out. Hitch up the horse and let him drive. It's the way it is. But we ask ourselves, and then I'm closing with this. We ask ourselves, so, so where are we now? Where are we now as a church, as a nation? Before COVID, we were in a spring harvest. We were growing, as you know, leaps and bounds. We were growing. God was moving. But where are we now? I believe as a corporate church, as a world, <coughs> we are between fall and winter with the election, with COVID, with the riots, etc. I believe personally, as a church and as a world, I think we're all kind of on the same level. We're kind of between fall and winter. But we better let him finish the pruning and we better let him grow our roots down deep. For this time is going to be the deciding factor for a lot of churches and for our country and for us as believers. This is a deciding moment. And it will determine whether or not we will have the root system and we will have the character to reap and hold the harvest that God has for us. Many of our churches, when they come out of this, will close. Many of our believers will fall away. And I'm praying to God that our country doesn't crumble. Amen. We are at a pivotal moment. And as we as a church, and if we as the church does not step back and recognize the seasons that we are in and let God begin to grow us deep. And prune us where we are and come out of this thing ready for God to do what he wants to do. God will not give us something that will destroy us. You see? Some of us don't have the character to sustain what we've been praying for. This is a pivotal moment that we must decipher or distinguish where we are as a nation. We must decipher where we are as a country and as a church. And we, as this church, we have to decipher, look, right now, we can kick and scream against this and say, oh, we were doing good. God was growing, so we're going to fight and scream and do everything we can to get back to that. Or we can say, okay, Lord, we're at a different level now. We're at a different point. We can scream all about the people that should be back that aren't yet. Or we can say, okay, we're, we're at a different level now. What are you doing? Okay, Lord, let's prune a little bit now, and let's grow our roots a little bit now so that when people do come back, we're ready. Let's disciple a little bit now. Let's get a little deeper now. Let's let God take us to places that we've never been so that when people come in, we have something to offer. Let's recognize the season of where we are at the moment. Let's get some fresh water with some deep roots. And that's what we need to do as a nation, and that's what we need to do as believers. We need to say, okay, look, the prosperity time that we once were enduring is <clears throat> not here at the moment. The freedom that we had to just go and do whatever we wanted to do is not here at the moment. We can sit around and gripe and complain about it. Or we can take this time. We can sit on Facebook and post meme after meme that is hurting other people's feelings. Or we can take a moment and open the word of God and let him refresh us a little bit. And let him pour something into us. And let him do something in us that takes us so deep that when the world turns around looking for hope, we actually have something to offer. Amen. And we begin to meet the need. We recognize the season of which we're in. 
And we begin to let God begin to pour it out. Because character and time and everything matters at this moment. Seasons. Finding God's plan. Finding where we are. Finding where we are. Universal. Just bow your heads with me.